So this is my uh, kind of wildland uh, sprayer unit. It's more for when we're doing work in the bush. I call it the 55 gallon fire extinguisher. Is a I get about 15 minutes uh, on this with a stream at full bore. It's this little two and a half horsepower one inch pump, and I've I've got two valves here. One will be a recirculate, and then the other one will be uh, for the discharge for the hose. It doesn't matter which one. This will eventually be a gauge, so I can figure out what kind of pressure I've got and just keep an eye on things. Right now, I've got the I've got a two inch suction uh, needle down to one inch. I can detach it. I could put a two inch pump on there. Not that it would last any longer. And uh, the suction's hooked up to the pump right now. I'm going to have a return line uh, coming off. It'll probably be this one. And it'll go into the tank. I have to drill in a bulkhead there. I've got some hose for it and all that. And then this tall stack thing is a vent. It was a little bit of an experiment at the time. I uh, I was going to try and have the return line come in through that uh, 45 there, but when I tried it, all it did was uh, burp up water, and it took forever to fill up the tank. So, uh, I've got a little jerry can of gas, uh, one inch discharge that I'll probably use for filling it, a couple of backpack pumps, one there, one in the back over there, and I've got some three quarter inch garden flow hose, it uses garden hose thread, uh, got it from Water Axe. And then I've got about 20 or 25 feet of suction hose and a little bit of extra from this thing here. And I've got a, I've got nozzles and strainers and stuff in this toolbox here. These ones I like the best are a straight bore. Um, and sometimes I just like using, uh, just using these ball valves. They, they make actually a fairly decent fog if you need it. Another piece of three quarter inch uh, hose barb there. So that's all going to be part of the return line to the pump. Um, check valve on the strainer. I kind of made the strainer. It came with the pump and it didn't have any cam locks or anything. So I, I kind of rearranged things a little bit better and then extra bits and pieces. I was going to go with a bigger bulkhead. But it didn't fit in there. So some pipe cement, fog nozzle another fog nozzle so the pump only makes 41 psi or 42 psi according to the specs i'll find out for sure but it's it's not a lot but i mean it's just you know trying to hold and keep things at bay until the fire department gets there or even put it out if it's possible so i've also got a corn broom somewhere in the back here i thought i did oh yeah it's over there and a spade as well so it's all part of the plan there so and uh, the wood the wood here the cribbing whatever you want to call it I'm not much of a carpenter I just kind of use whatever little bits and pieces I had and it just helps hold the tank in place along with the ratchet strap so um, I'm gonna do something better eventually I'll get a proper tank I've got somebody who said he's got a 100 gallon tank that I might be able to have from him. I, I don't know what the deal is with that, but uh, it's a 100 gallon poly tank and I'm not sure how well it'll fit in here and how much more it'll weigh down the uh, back of the truck. It's only a 4.7 liter V8 in here and you know, you don't want to kill the thing, but uh, we'll see. I also carry 125 gallons of diesel fuel for my work. That's for refueling the excavators or whatever we've got at the time. I'm probably going to go down to a smaller slip tank eventually. I don't really need to carry that much fuel. It was just a tank handed down to me by one of my uncles. So it's nice for some things, but it can be a pain in the butt because it's so much fuel and it's a bit of a liability. So that's it.